Hello and welcome to another episode of Tips and Tricks. Today I'm going to show you how to magnetise a Devastator and a Salt Centurion. This episode is rather uh, unique because hardly anybody I know magnetises Centurions. But I've managed to do every single weapons option for this kit. Unlike the previous episode with the Hellhound, this is a little bit more complicated to do but it can be achievable as I show you step by step as to how to do it. So I hope you like this video and stay tuned for more details. Okay, these are all the weapons options for the Assault and Devastator Centurion. But for the magnetizing purposes, what you do is if I grab this here, this is where the missile launcher goes. Now, this magnet here is a, I believe it's a two by, I think it's like two by one and a half magnet. And as you can see there, that simply slides into position like so. You may have noticed there's a little hole, and I'll come back to that later on. So if you wanted to do a missile launcher option, that simply goes into position like that. And then for the other side, it's very simple, exactly the same like we did with the previous side. That simply goes into position like that. That's the missile launcher configuration. Okay, the next configuration we're going to look at is the fragmentation launchers. These are the fragmentation launchers here. That simply goes into position like that and then likewise with the other side there you go that there's the fragmentation launchers for the centurion okay the last weapons options we're going to look at for the support weapon for the centurion is what's known as the hurricane bolter now it's very easy just like the previous options that simply slides into position like that, and then that one there simply goes into position like so. So that there is what's known as the Hurricane Bolter. Now you're probably wondering, how do I get these out? It's very, very important that these here are not glued. That support for the weapon. Now, if I look at this, put this down, look at the back, you can see that it's got a hole. Now this is where the pin comes in very useful, makes life a lot easier. And that simply, you can pin it out and it comes out like so. There you go. Nicely done there. And inside there is a two by one and a half magnet. And these are very, very tiny magnets. These are one mil by one mil magnets. They are very tiny, but they do the job very, very nicely. Now, with the shoulder pads, it only comes with two shoulder pads, which is the plain shoulder pad and the insignium shoulder pad. So I had to buy another set for the Devastator Centurion option, so that you, it's for purposes of uh, transfers when applying that later on after you painted the miniature. Now, what you do when magnetizing this, it's important that you do these two options here first and then you place the shoulder pads on. So the two shoulder pads simply go into position like that. There's a magnet exactly the same that fits in alignment to the actual kit itself. It's very easy, you just simply cut the um, sprue, tiny bit of sprue to make it nice and level for the magnet to fit on. Now with this here, you can magnetize this cable with a magnet if you really wanted to, but it's, it's quite good hold anyway, without it. Now what I've done here is I put two to three magnets, drilled a hole inside here, fitting a two by one and a half mil magnet. That simply slots into position like that. Make sure it's nice and level. There you go, nice and level for you there. Now that magnet there is the reason we have the melter gun and the flamer. So take the melter gun, 
simply goes into position like so. I've magnetized it so it's nice and level there, so it's not crooked or anything like that. Put it back on. And do the flamer likewise. Now, normally, an assault centurion would be equipped with fragmentation launchers, but this is just a demonstration just to make life a lot easier for you viewers out there. So that's the flamer on the Centurion. Now what we're going to do is we're going to put the other arm on. You can see that exactly the same. Put two magnets, two to three magnets, give it a nice strong magnetization. If you put one magnet, it's, it's a lot weaker. I recommend you put two to three magnets inside there. And where that hole is there, that's where you put the magnet in alignment to the cable that's attached to the assault drill. Now, if I put the other hand on, there you go, nice and level, and then you put the flame on, like that. There you go, you've got your assault centurion of all the options, like that. You're probably thinking, why do I go for all the weapons options? Well, it really does pay off at the end of the day, because you never know. Some people do like Assault Centurions and some people like the Devastator Centurion. Okay, the last option we're going to look at is what's known as the Devastator Centurion. Now, this is the most co uh, popular configuration for Centurions. People love Grav Cannons, Grav Amp, and I don't blame them. because They're a very powerful weapon to use. So, I'm just going to put these on here. That simply slides into the position like so. There you go. The cable's nicely aligned to the grav cannon, and likewise, if I just put that a bit more level, there you go, nicely put in position like so with the grav amp. So it's nicely fitted into position there. Now, closer detail of where the magnet is. The magnet, I put, I think I put three magnets for this one because it's quite a heavy weapon. So I put and drilled a little bit of a deep hole there. And then that just simply goes into position like so, like that. And now for the twin link LAS cannons. Now, my brother Luke, who runs the uh, Strike and Scorpion 82 channel, he uses this configuration, except only a slight difference here you know, is he uses um, missile launchers as opposed to heavy bolters. But this is, again, it's just a demonstration purpose for doing that. So there you go, you've got the LAS cannon fitted there. And then with the other LAS cannon, simply in alignment with the cables as well, it fits there. So there you go, that's your Devastator Centurion with Twin Link LAS cannons. And now for the Twin Link Heavy Bolter, which is the last configuration we're going to look at today in this episode, that simply blows into position like so, and that goes in there like that look at that fits really nicely again we've got the heavy bolter there and the heavy bolter there and again we've got the magnet fitted into position i think i only put a couple of these in because because not as heavy as a weapon when you think of it but it's got a really nice fit there so there you go so what we're going to do now is we're going to look at all the components that you'll need and have a closer look. So there you go, that's how you magnetise all the options for the Assault and Devastator Centurion types. I hope you found this video very useful. As you may know me by now, I love having different weapons options and configurations when making a 40k kit. And yeah, it's been good fun making this. It can be arduous when making it. I mean, this is only one Centurion. I've got a squadron of six for my army. 
they've all constructed and I've just got to paint them for the time being when it comes. So I hope you like this video. Don't forget to hit the like button and especially if you could subscribe because there's going to be more videos coming on this channel hopefully. And there will be battle reports when it comes to X-Wing, Warhammer Ancients, well, so we've got 40k, possibly 30k, and yeah, there you go. So that's all the videos I'll hopefully be doing, hopefully try and expand. And all I just need is your support and your subscription to this channel. So thank you very much for watching. Have a good day, and I hopefully see you in the next episode.